Howdy! Welcome to Aspire Mountain Academy. I'm Professor Curtis, your instructor for this course in Introductory Statistics. In less than 10 minutes, this video describes how some graphs can deceive their audiences. Let's get started. In the previous mini lectures, we've considered effective ways to communicate data. Now we're going to examine some ways in which data can be communicated deceptively. Not every instance of deceptive communication is done intentionally. Many exist out of simple ignorance. Others are performed intentionally because people want to promote a particular agenda. Consider the use of a non-zero axis. These graphs are misleading because by not starting the y-axis at zero, the differences between items you're comparing become exaggerated. Here we have an example where we're looking at three models of cars and comparing the highway fuel consumption in miles per gallon. Notice how it looks like there's quite a bit of difference here between the Honda Civic and the Toyota Camry with the Chevy Aveo here in the middle. Looking at the visual representation alone, so essentially ignoring the numbers, which is something a lot of people do with visual anything, this representation makes it appear some substantial difference exists between these models. Now, what if we were to redo this graph with axes to start at zero? What would it look like? Well, it would look something like this. Do you see why somebody used a non-zero axis? Presumably, someone wants you to buy a Honda Civic. They used a non-zero axis because if you actually use that non-zero axis that starts at zero, notice how there doesn't seem to be all that much difference between these three models. They seem fairly close. That's because they are. Look at the numbers. You've got the Toyota Camry coming in at 31, and the Honda Civic coming in at 36. Yeah, 36 is better than 31, but is it significantly better? To me, 36 and 31 are kind of in the same ballpark, and that's what this graph with the zero axis communicates, which is the way it should be communicated. So don't exaggerate differences by starting with a non-zero value on your axis. You don't want to be distorting people's perception of what the data are really saying. Here's another way in which people communicate data from misleading fashion. Misleading fashion. So pictographs are basically graphs created with the drawings of objects. They create false distorted impressions of the data. Often a pictograph depicts a three-dimensional object. So for example, a graph about expenditures might use a pictograph based on money bags or stacks of coins. Uh, people are often used for population sizes. Barrels are often used to communicate oil production. Houses could be used when you're looking at, say, home sales or property values. They don't have to be three-dimensional objects, but they typically are. And here's the problem with that, why they can mislead pic people. Pictographs use two-dimensional objects with areas and three-dimensional objects with volumes to depict one-dimensional values. When you do the math, you see that the same increase along you know, one single dimension in each of these instances doesn't add up the same. For example, let's say you have a line, a square, and a cube. These are one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional objects, respectively. Now, if you double the size along one dimension, the line will increase by a factor of two. But the square increases by a factor of four. Okay, area is length squared, so two squared is four. And the cube increases in volume by a factor of eight. Volume is length cubed, or, you know, times itself three times. So two cubed is eight. So using two or three dimensional objects to represent one dimensional values is just plain inconsistent. Here's another point of exact, exact deception. What exactly are the data points here in this graph? I mean, trash cans are probably representing trash production rates, but, you know, is this for a building, a community, a county, a state? You know what? I, I have no idea. Just like I have no idea where the data points in the graph are. I mean, is the data point located at the top of the trash can itself? Or is it in the top corner of the lid? Or 
Is it in the center of each trash can? I mean, you can see the numbers are going to be different in each case, but the use of the pictogram makes the true position of the data points vague, and anything vague is likely to mislead. So I don't really know what's going on with this graph. A better representation would be just a simple table. Granted, it's not as sexy as using the pictures, but your primary consideration when reporting data needs to be clarity. Here in this example, there's only three numbers, so a table is really appropriate here. Do you see the power of a simple presentation device in communicating your content clearly? Now, there's some other considerations to make when communicating technical information. Edward Tuff wrote the book, literally, on communicating technical information. Although not everyone agrees with everything he suggests, myself included, many regard Tuff as a subject matter expert when it comes to communicating technical data. If you haven't heard of this guy or know his work, I highly recommend giving him a look. I don't completely agree with everything Tuff has to offer, but I do think he's worth considering because in the very least he gets you thinking about what you're doing. And some of his suggestions are really worth following. For example, if you have small data sets, meaning 20 values or fewer, use a table instead of a graph. That makes perfect sense to me. The whole point of a graph is to get your arms around the data when the data set has so many numbers you can't keep track of them. So a graph summarizes large data sets, which is precisely why you wouldn't use a graph for a small data set. Small data sets don't need a summary. We saw an example of this just a moment ago with the trash can pictographs. Okay, here's another great suggestion. The graph should make the viewer focus on the true nature of the data, not on other eye-catching, distracting elements. So, you know, sometimes people that are making presentations like to make it like a real show and a vibe for attention. But that just distracts from the actual data itself. And communicating the data is the whole purpose of the presentation. Now, this doesn't mean you have to strip your presentation of everything except the naked data. Look at my mini lecture videos. You can communicate technical content in a way that elicits attention from the audience while at the same time not distracting too much from the technical content you need to convey. The key is to focus first on function, then on form. Each one should support the other. Now, don't distort the data to forward your own agenda. Let the data say what it really says. Your understanding of the data will drive everything that comes thereafter. And if dishonesty is your driver, sooner or later, you'll always get bitten. So let integrity be your driver. Don't distort the data. And finally, almost all the ink and graphs should be used for the data and not for other design elements. This is a corollary of the earlier suggestion to focus on the data and not distracting elements of the presentation. In the real world, that's the whole reason why you're having a meeting. It's to understand the data. So let the data have its day to tell its true story. And that brings us to the end of this mini lecture. I hope you found it helpful. You can find more mini lectures for this and other courses at AspireMountainAcademy.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.